Today, I'm going to talk about all of my best settings on the brand new Insta360 ONE RS that will help you get the most cinematic, best footage possible out of this camera. So the version of the Insta360 ONE RS that I have here is the 4K version. So this version is the one that just has the 4K boost lens. It does not have the 360 lens with it. And the 4K version retails for just $299, which is a pretty good value for what this camera offers. This camera has some great modes on it, and I'm gonna go through those today when I show you the best settings. In my best settings today, I'm going to show you how to configure this video for talking to the camera, when you want to do slow motion, and also when you want to do that 6K extra cinematic widescreen mode. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to power this camera on. And what I'm gonna do here first is I'm going to guide you through some general settings that you'll want to change. And these settings will apply regardless to what you want to film on this camera. So what we wanna do here is we wanna swipe down and this is gonna get us to the general menu. So a few things we wanna change here initially. We wanna click here on the screen brightness. Now this is more of a personal preference. It's not really a big deal. It will save a little bit of battery power if you make this slightly dimmer. So I like to bring that down to about there. That's about 75, 80% brightness. And that's not going to affect your final footage. That's just gonna affect how you see it on the camera here. This next setting is for disabling the touchscreen operation. I recommend leaving that disabled unless you are exclusively using your phone to control the camera, which you can use the Insta360 app to do so. And if you want to, it can be a little bit easier than using this tiny screen here. The screen is pretty small, so there is a potential benefit to that. But I like using the screen most of the time still. The phone, I don't always trust the connection between the phone and the camera. Sometimes I feel like that connection may not work properly. Uh, so I like to do it directly from the camera. Next setting here is the stabilization. And for the stabilization, you can put it on low, standard, or high. Now, if you have it on high stabilization, there's actually a delay in this camera. So if you move the camera left or right, it takes a second for what you're seeing on the camera to actually catch up with what's happening. So I like to set this to standard. I find that standard does a good job and it's got the best benefit. There is no crop with that and there's not much of a preview lag. So that's great. For the next setting here, I like to have the indicator light on. That way I know when the camera's on and uh, it's just helpful to have it on. That's also a personal preference. Uh, that's not gonna affect your end footage. We're gonna drag left here. The next setting is gonna be for the grid lines. I like having the grid lines on. It makes it easier to do that rule of thirds. So you'll wanna make sure this setting is turned on. And then the next setting here is for automatic screen rotation. I do not like the automatic screen rotation on. I like it to stay horizontal, so I'm going to turn that off. Voice control, you can turn on or off. I personally don't use voice control with this, so I recommend keeping that off, unless you do. The next setting here is for quick capture, on or off. Uh, I like to keep quick capture on in case I just wanna hit that record button and have the camera turn on and start recording right away. So I'm gonna keep that on. And finally, your last menu here is where there's a lot of the more detailed settings. So if you go under general here, for the prompt sound, I like to make sure that's on. For Bluetooth wake up, that's not really gonna affect recording. Webcam zoom, same thing. Auto power off, if you go under this, you can select the settings here. I put it to never, because I don't want the camera to ever power off on me. Uh, if I do have it on, I have it on for a reason, so I set never, but you're welcome to adjust that as you wish to. Sharpness is a key setting here. For sharpness, you do not want it to be in the, the high or very high range. That footage does not look great. I recommend either having it low or medium. So if you're not gonna wanna do a lot of editing, then I recommend keeping it at medium. Medium's a pretty good balance of sharpness, but if you are gonna be doing editing later on, I recommend keeping it at low. It's gonna give you the best possible footage to work with later on and it's a lot easier to add sharpness to the footage than take it away. So I recommend low here. 
For the anti-flicker, you can keep it at auto or you can set it based on your region. So if you're in the United States, you'll want to set this to 60 Hertz. But if you were not in the United States, for most nations, you're gonna to wanna to set it to 50 Hertz. And for language, you're of course gonna want that set to whatever your language preference is. For the gyro calibration, I recommend doing this before you use the camera for the first time. I'm not gonna go through that today, but the instructions are really good on here. It does involve lining up the camera in certain ways and then letting it calibrate. And the key with this is if this is calibrated properly, if you don't have stabilization on, or if you're using the 6K widescreen mode where you cannot use stabilization, it's going to make it possible to stabilize that footage a lot more easily later on. Insta360 has free editing software that you can install on your Windows or Mac device, and that software will stabilize the footage really nicely. And that's important because with the widescreen 6K mode, there is not built-in stabilization. So you either need to have this on a gimbal or you need to stabilize it later on. There are a few more settings down here. Most of these are not going to affect the footage except a couple. So the key settings you'll want to change, first of all, with your SD card, make sure you format that the first time before you use it in there. I have footage on there right now and I've already formatted it, so I'm not going to do so again. But you do want to make sure you format it so it's gonna have maximum compatibility and not cause errors in your camera. For audio mode, you'll want to adjust this as well. I recommend if you're going to use the audio from the camera and not an external mic, I recommend keeping the wind reduction on. It does make a big difference. But if it's not a windy day at all, you could use stereo or directional enhancement. I don't recommend using the built-in mics on this if you want really good audio. I do recommend an external mic. The sound just is not that great direct out of the camera. You can do that and it can work, but it will likely require some editing later on in order for it to sound decent. All right, now that we've got all of those general settings out of the way, let's dive into the actual video modes. So in order to toggle to the mode that you'll want, you'll want to swipe right. You're going to see 13 different pre-configured presets here. So what you're going to want for video is you're going to want to go to the video one. It's number seven out of 13, and you're going to want to click on that. So the first mode I'm going to show you here is this is going to be the mode if you're talking to the camera. So if you want to talk and record on the camera, this is going to be the mode if you want it to be normal speed, no slow-mo, no anything like that, just your standard run-of-the-mill video mode. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna swipe left from the right-hand side. And this is where you're gonna see a lot of the settings. So the first one here, we're gonna click where it says Vivid. This is gonna be your color settings. So this one is going to be a matter of preference. Do you want to do a lot of editing later on or do you want the colors to pretty much be what they are out of the camera? I generally recommend standard mode if you just want standard, not too vibrant of colors. If you do want those deeper, richer, more saturated colors, then I do recommend Vivid. That's gonna give you those. But if you want to do a lot of color correction or editing later on, then I recommend going to Log Mode. Log Mode is basically very flat. It's not going to have a lot of color in it, but the color details will be available there for you to color correct later on and bring out as you prefer. But for most folks, standard is gonna be the option that you want. This is gonna be your shutter speed setting. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to have your shutter set to auto up here. That's gonna generally give you the best results. The only time where you might want it set to something is if you're filming in low light and you're doing uh, 24 frames per second, you could set that shutter speed to one over 48, or in this case, one over 50. That will give you the best results. But if you're just using this normally, you'll want to keep it to auto. So for the ISO, I do recommend changing that to manual. And I like limiting the ISO to 800. I don't want the ISO to go any higher than 800. The footage starts to get grainy. So I like to limit it to that. If 800 is not needed, if it's really bright, then great. The camera will adjust to a lower ISO and you'll get even better footage that way. But if you are in a really low light situation, 800 may not be enough. So keep that in mind. But at the same time, if you get above 800, the footage does get grainy and it's rather unusable. For the white balance, if you're gonna be filming outside during the daytime on a sunny or sun and clouds type of day, I recommend setting this to 5,000K. It's gonna give you the best results. 
If you are filming outside, like at a sunset or sunrise or during that golden hour, then I do recommend setting this up to about 6,500K. That's gonna give you some really nice footage during that time of day. But otherwise, for just your standard daytime use, I recommend 5,000K. It's gonna give you the best results. And having a set white balance is going to make it easier to edit that footage later on because it's all going to be consistent and have the same white balance. And finally, down here at the bottom, if you want to change your frames per second or your resolution, this is where you would adjust it. And you'll note it does say that flow state is turned on. Uh, so that's something to note that the stabilization is on. So personally, I prefer either filming footage in 4K 30 or 4K 24 frames per second if you're not gonna do any slow motion. So if you're planning out what your timeline is gonna look like later on for your finished product, this is a good place to pick that. So you'll wanna pick the frames per second that matches that. In my case, I like the 24 frames per second timeline, so I'm gonna set this to that. But if you're gonna be doing a 30 frames per second timeline, then set it to 30 here. Now that we've programmed those settings in, is we're gonna to go to the quick settings. So to get there, you're gonna to touch right here and you're gonna swipe right. It's a little bit tricky, it might take a few tries. I found this the hardest menu to get to. So what you wanna do here where it says C1 video, you'll want to click on the arrows right here. And it's gonna say, do you wanna save the current shooting parameters to this preset? You're gonna click confirm. It's gonna save those right there so it's nice and easy to switch and toggle to that mode when you wanna use it. All right, so for the next settings, I'm going to show you the best slow-mo settings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here, get to this menu, and we're gonna go this way and get to the turtle symbol, which is slow-mo, number 11 out of 13. We're gonna click on that. And we're gonna click down here at the bottom first to adjust the resolutions. And for slow-mo on this, the highest it'll go is 2.7K for the resolution. But for the best slow-mo, you'll definitely want to select 100 frames per second. That's gonna give you the most flexibility. So if you have a 24 frames per second or a 30 frames per second timeline, you're gonna be able to slow this down to about that 25 to 30% of the normal speed. And that's gonna look really neat for slow motion. So once you've selected that, you're gonna swipe left and we're gonna go in here and set these settings again. So similar to before, the color settings are largely up to you and depend on how much editing you wanna do. But I recommend going with standard if you're not sure which. You can always experiment with that as you get more familiar with the camera. And for shutter speed, I recommend keeping that at auto, especially in this case when your frames per second are 100, auto is going to give you good results with this. For the ISO, I once again recommend limiting that to 800. You'll generally not want to go over 800 or things are gonna get grainy. For the white balance, it's gonna be the same as I mentioned earlier for the standard mode. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to set that around 5,000 K if you're just in the daytime, most normal use cases. But if it is sunset or sunrise or around that time of day, I do recommend going a little bit higher to 6,500 K. Those are my recommendations for the best slow motion settings. And finally, I'm gonna show you one more 4K mode. And this is gonna be the mode where if you wanna slow it down a little bit, but not too much, while you still want to have 4K, this is gonna be the right mode for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to video once again. And the only change we're gonna make here is down here at the bottom. We are gonna change this to 60 frames per second. So 60 frames per second is going to allow you to slow down the footage by two and a half times if you're going to 24 frames per second or two times if you're in 30 frames per second. So 30 frames per second would be half speed. 24 frames per second would be a little bit slower than half speed. I like using this mode because it's 4K and the footage you can do a lot with it. So this is footage that's good if you wanna do some speed ramping where you wanna have it go at normal speed, slow down a little bit and then speed back up. This is perfect for that. So that is the only setting you have to change here. The rest of the settings we set earlier, you can keep the same. And what I do is I don't save a preset for this because I'm changing just one setting on it. So I operate from that C1 preset, that's for my 4K 24. And then I just change this to 60 when I'm using that and then when I'm done and wanna go back to 4K24, I either click on that preset or I just click back here and go back to 24 frames per second. Makes it nice and easy. 
no problems there. So the final mode I wanna show you is that really cinematic 6K widescreen mode. So what I love about this mode is first of all, it is 6K, which is an incredible value on a camera that only costs 299. Now it is important to note, you can only do 24 or 25 frames per second with the 6K. You can't do any higher frames per second. But that being said, that 6K 24 is some really nice looking widescreen footage. Now, if you're filming a project in widescreen, I recommend keeping the entire project at widescreen. I don't recommend mixing widescreen with your standard resolution, your 16 by nine, because it's gonna look odd with some of the footage having those black bars on top and some of the footage not having it. So if you are doing a widescreen project, I recommend sticking exclusively with that. So the way we're gonna get to widescreen is we're gonna go here to the main menu. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get here to number 13 to 13, which is 6K widescreen mode. We're gonna click on that. And it's gonna tell you that 6K widescreen mode is not recommended in low light environment. So once you've acknowledged that, you can either click confirm or click don't show again, and then click confirm. So what we're gonna to wanna to do first is we're gonna to wanna to click down here. And in this case, like I said, there's either 24 or 25 frames per second available. So I'm going to set this to 24. And then we're gonna swipe left and we're gonna start changing our color settings first. A lot of you may want to do some additional editing on the 6K footage to really add that cinematic creativity to it. So this may be one of those modes where log may interest you. Log is great if you wanna add some LUTs or do some serious color correction. So like I said earlier, if there's gonna be a mode you use log in, this is the one I recommend log most for because you're going to get some truly great results and it's gonna make that footage really stand out. However, if you don't wanna do a lot of color correction, standard will do pretty well for you. And also Vivid, if you want a little bit higher saturation, uh, Vivid is great too. Vivid does pretty good on this camera in this mode. So again, that's up to you and your creativity. For the shutter speed, if the lighting will allow for it, I do recommend setting this to twice the frame rate, which would be one over 50. However, if you're doing that during the daytime, your footage will be way too white and blown out if you do that without an ND filter. And I don't believe there are any ND filters for the Insta360 ONE RS yet available on the market. So once those do become available, you could get one of those for this camera and that would allow you to do that 180 rule where you have the shutter speed twice the frame rate. But until then, or if you don't have one, I recommend keeping this at auto. That's gonna ensure that you have the proper lighting and it's still gonna look good. For the ISO, I do recommend limiting this to 800, just like with the other modes. 800 is gonna give you the best results here. But like that warning said at the beginning, you do have to make sure you're filming in good lighting with this mode, that is important. For the white balance, I recommend changing that to 5000K if you're filming in normal standard daytime lighting. That's gonna give you the best results. But if you are doing sunset or sunrise filming, put it to 6500K and that's gonna look extra good. And there you go. Those are the settings for all of the modes that I recommend. So to recap, I gave you the settings for the 4K 24 frames per second mode, which is going to be a standard use mode. That's gonna be a great mode for when you wanna to talk to the camera or just shoot some real speed footage. I also went through the slow-mo mode where you would want the 2.7K with 100 frames per second. And then I also showed you the 4K 60 mode, which is that one change if you want to do speed ramping. Having 4K 60 is gonna give you maximum resolution and flexibility for slowing down and speeding up a clip again. And then finally, I showed you the 6K widescreen mode which is great for those extra, extra cinematic projects where you would like that widescreen and the black bars on the top and the bottom. I hope you find this video to be helpful with getting the best possible footage from the Insta360 ONE RS. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below.